The way we select board is conducting a hearing under section 157 of chapter 140 of the general laws of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts on a complaint filed by Colette and Christopher Olanik regarding incidents involving the male dog owned by Denise Donahue and kept at 100 Haydenville Road in Waitlet. In addition, excuse me, the select board is in receipt of letters from multiple residents expressing serious concern about their personal safety, alleging that the dog in question is not always under the control of the owner, while both on public property and the private property of others. The board will first hear from the Atlantics, who may present evidence in support of the complaint. We will also hear from an animal control officer and chief of police. We will then allow Ms. Donahue or her representative to respond and present any opposing evidence. During the process, the board may ask questions of anyone presenting evidence. The board may also ask for input from relevant town officials. After hearing the evidence presented, the board will deliberate and consider what action it will take under the statute. It may deliberate at this meeting and or at subsequent meeting before making its decision. Under the statute, the board may dismiss the complaint deem the dog a nuisance dog or deem the dog a dangerous dog. If the board finds the dog to be a nuisance dog, the board may make an order for remedial action. If the dog finds the dog a dangerous dog, the dog will make, the board will make one or more orders to address the situation, which may include restraint, confinement, or reproductive alteration. Also, I would like to lay out some basic ground rules. The testimony will be limited to the issue that is being presented, which is the question of the dog and not the owners of the dog directly. So everything should be addressed to the behavior of the dog. One person will be speaking at a time. All discussion will go through the chair. All parties are expected to conduct themselves civilly and arguments between the parties will not be tolerated. If you're being recorded and we can begin with the Lennox, they one more vote will stand up and be sworn in. Yeah. Yeah. So if you wish to speak, um, when it is your turn, if you stand up, I just have to swear you in because you are providing testimony. And uh, I will also ask that you give me your full names and addresses. Excuse, excuse me. May I sit over there so I can see the people that are actually um, talking? Uh, no. Can I move my chair? To you, yeah, you, you can move your chair wherever you like so you can see okay. whomever. But... Thank you so much. Okay, can you give me your first and last names and address, please? Christopher and uh, Colette Olenek, 21 Laurel Mountain Road, Wait. Okay, if you could raise your right hands, please. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you are about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. yes. Complaints may not proceed. Uh, this began for us a little over a year ago when our then six, seven, seven, yeah. right around the birthday, <laughs> six or seven year old son uh, was playing outside in our yard by himself. Uh, we live on a private drive. We are a quarter of a mile from the public road. Um, and my husband looked out the window to see our son standing in the field like this because the dog with his leash trailing behind it uh, was up in his face, barking, growling. Um, and Denise was yelling from the other side of the field, you're okay, he's fine. And our son is still talking about this very terrifying incident. Um, this, like I said, has continued for over a year now with multiple instances of the dog being on our private property after being asked to leave the folks from us, the police having another trespass order. The dog is sometimes accompanied by Miss Donahue, uh, other times has been wandering with her looking for it. Um, and what led us to this event was after hearing everybody in the neighborhood similar experiences. Um, I was coming home from picking the boys up at the bus stop and saw Denise and the dog a short ways past the shared driveway. 
Um, as I pulled into the private drive, I saw them turn around and start coming back down the street. So I parked a short ways onto the drive to ensure they were going to continue on their way. Beautiful day, the kids wanted to play outside, and we have now become accustomed to looking out the window every five minutes because too many times there has been an unwanted guest. Um, and so I sat in the car with the kids, and Denise got to the end of the shared drive, let go of the leash, which I have seen her do on multiple occasions. The dog came onto our property. Um, I stayed in the car for a few minutes, waiting for it to move on. It just stayed right in front of the car, so I couldn't <clears throat> go anywhere to do anything. Um, Denise had stayed at the end of the shared drive at that point. So I got out of the car, I got the dog's leash, I started walking it toward the end of the private drive. Denise came onto the private drive and had been calling to me while doing so saying, it's fine, I've got him, it's okay. Uh, and he let me lead him a short distance. And then when I went to pass the leash to Denise, he jumped up on his hind legs, bit my arm, which broke the skin, threw my jacket, threw a sweater, uh, in two places, uh, scratched my thumb, which also drew blood, scratched along my thigh and my abdomen. Um, and to which she replied, I'm so sorry, he's scared of the wound. Um, I, see the wound. The gun. I got back in the car and had to wait between two and five minutes for them to leave the property because she could not get him to leave. Um, at which point I came home and told the and then had to go to the doctor the next day and I get a tetanus shot. Um, and our children have been terrified with maybe yes. be an accurate or an understatement for both seeing this happen, having their own encounters with this, um, having similar experiences with neighbors at the bus stop. Nowhere feels safe. Private property doesn't feel safe. The bus stop doesn't feel safe. The dog never seems to be under control, even when it's on a leash. It's being pulled. It's it dictates what happens. Not the owner. I'm sorry, you didn't get the, the dog dictates what happens. Not the owner. She clearly has no control over it when she is with it. And you want to go on? Your son is We're not. <laughs> I mean, I think the, the only person just that, comments from that makes what the rules were seem irrelevant. If we're going to constantly have comments coming back, it's okay, I'll be fine. One of the people are trying to speak. Go for it. Um, we have with us a number of statements from people who I don't believe turn them in directly to you guys because we had said we would bring them um, on behalf of other people who some of are here in person, some are here via Zoom, um, so that if there was any question about anything, so would you like us to give them Yeah, to you? we have okay. 10 written statements uh, in addition to medical records. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything else to say at the moment? No. Do you have any questions? Do you have any, if, you can, if you can... I don't want to waste the time right now. Well, no, you've got... The, these are... People bring the complaint. Okay, so we're doing it individually, not no. all at the end. Okay. The, they are. What's your the, name? Excuse me. You, please introduce yourself. Please. My name is Denise Donahue. I live right by you. Um, address? Your, address? 100 Hayden Hill Road. Okay, and, so can you guys just have to yeah. worry? You've got to stand up, no problem. Right here, right do you solemnly swear that the testimony you are about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, the whole truth? So, I do. And nice to meet you. And I live right below you. I live on a very long road in the woods, just letting everybody know this. And my dog was hit by a truck, and he sounds sensitive. I did not say my dog is afraid of the wind. A big truck drove by. He was off the leash for a chicken pull up. I'm on a quiet road, not your street. You were in a vehicle that day, but I see you by the way. You were in your vehicle, and I warned you. My dog was off the leash. Yes, I, I totally admit that to all of us. He's a, he's a big dog, a big baby. And what you said, actually, I told you, don't get out of your car, because I have anxiety of what my dog might do. He's not dangerous. 
He says it's my fear because I know I'm not allowed on the property. This is on the edge of that long road, that very long road. I know you live down there. I saw you once when your your son was playing. You're not there. He was there. Your son was playing, having a great time, having a great time in school. I'm not a freak. I love kids. My dog, he loved my dog actually. So I'm sorry he's scared. I understand as a mom how you must feel and apologize for that. But my dog is not known to attack. I told you and my dog to protect it because I me. Uh, I told you not to get out of your vehicle. Why would you get out? I'm not gonna be a jerk here. But seriously, you were parked right there at the end of a long road in the country. Okay. I'm going up the hill right there, literally right here, four feet from the road. That's where you are parked. And I told you not to get out of your vehicle. Excuse, excuse, me. excuse me. Address okay. your remarks here. Okay, I'm sorry about that. But I've lived in this town for 23 years. I've had three dogs. And guess what? The past two dogs were never even on a leash and they did nothing. Uh, my dog has been jumped on by people walking their dogs without a leash on that road. And I never said anything. I never would say anything because we live in a free country. Okay, not a town that's in the woods. It's not the city. We don't live next to each other. Everybody owns acres. Okay, I know you and I know your dogs in my yard all the time. Have no problem with any of you guys. Never had a problem before. And I will say, why, if you have common sense and are a mother with no kids around, why would you get out of your car to hand me a leash? Why? Totally. Mm -hmm. Wow. Why did you do that? And I told you not to do it because I didn't know I'm freaking out because I don't know who you are, but it's very nice to meet you. You seem like a nice family. I met you, I met your son. Everybody's really nice. That's all I have to say. But why would you get out of a vehicle if you're in it with a dog loose? Why would you go to the dog when the owner's right there? Answer that. They are not required to answer. It's fine. Anything. And she was safe. I don't know why she would yank them and hand it back to me. And that's my word. And that's her word. We, well, go for it. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. We have to carry on. <laughs> then let's, I want to hear from Animal Control Officer and then Chief of Police on regarding this dog. Right, Ms. Ware? Yes. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you are about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth so far? I do. You may proceed. Okay. Can you tell us any anything you have to say that has come to your attention regarding this dog? Um, I've been getting complaints about the dog for a while. People complaining that the dog is on their property. And I think the the one complaint that everybody comes out with is um, they feel Denise doesn't isn't able to keep the dog under control. It's a very large dog, very intimidating dog, well muscled dog. I mean, this dog so walks ten miles a day, and yes, so people are people. Um, and he's he's a handful for her, and that's the main thing people are worried about that that uh, the dog is. I don't want to say not well. Trained but doesn't listen to her as well as most people would like it to, and they they are intimidated by the dog. And um, <clears throat> the dog has grabbed me at one time, I, and it was the dog could have put me in a hospital if he wanted to. I was loading it in the back of the truck to give her and the dog a ride home, and it was one of these things where the dog grabbed my arm, and it was basically, you know, you let go, I'll let go, and uh, that's about where that went. But um, I, I don't look at the dog as a as as a what I would consider a real vicious dog, but he's very intimidating, and I could see where a small child would be scared of it. And you know, the, the state law, leash law says it needs to be under control of the owner at all times, and that that is part of the law. And it doesn't have to be under mechanical control; it could be verbal control, but. There have been times where I've had several people tell me that the dog gets away from her and she has to chase it down. The dog won't go back to her all the time. So you, <clears throat> the dog either does not is not sufficiently trained or just is not just does, does, does not respond well. It does not respond well to her. It it, um, it it doesn't seem to. A couple of times I've dealt with the dog. I have seen the dog, I mean, pull her up the road. And the dog actually has a rub mark on his chest 
from from pulling all the time. Um, he wants to go. He wants to go, and she doesn't have it under under control. Um, I raised hunting dogs my whole life. I've had you know I worked at the university with you know collaring bears, and I had bear dogs. And um, these dogs are very high you know intense dogs. And my dogs, I could beat four dogs out of the woods at one time by myself because I made sure they learned how to be, you know. And I talked to her, and she's, you know, every time I talk to her, she's been pleasant, you know, to try to do something different with the dog, put a different collar on it or something like that to keep the dog under control. And she just had no luck with it. In your experience dealing with dogs of this sort, mm -hmm. would the kind of thing that happened with Ms. Alana trying to give the leash back to the owner. Is it possible the dog can perceive that as a threat to the owner rather yeah, than absolutely. a yeah. gesture? That, that could be, but um, again, the bottom line is the dog, the dog needed to be under control. I, I'm just trying to... No, no, I, I figure out the circumstances of the bite. When Miles grabbed my arms, because I was trying to pick him up and put right. him in the back of the truck. And it was, you know, I, I should have known better. I shouldn't have done that because he, he is he, a very he, dominant. He did not, was not attacking you, for lack of a better term, unprovoked. But no, he, I was picking him up. So I, I had my hands on the dog trying to literally lift him. And that's when he, and he grabbed my arm, and this dog is big enough and powerful enough, he could have put me in a hospital. And he grabbed me, and as soon as I let him go, he let me go. And you were there, Don was there, and witnessed him. And that's pretty much what happened. When I grabbed him, he grabbed me, and we came to an agreement that uh, we were going to let each other go. So, but the dog needs to be kept under control. That's, that's, you can. I, 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 do you have any questions? I have no questions, but it did happen a long time ago. We did get our dog during the beginning of the pandemic. We are a family of five. Uh, we did not have the time, or we had the time, we did not have the money to hire a trainer at the time. And I am a very compassionate person. Probably admit that, I'm not sure anymore. But I would say you got to work with your dog. And it's been a long time since that incident and yours as well. Nothing happened. This with your son was over a year ago. And secondly, um, my dog was hit by a truck and he sound sensed it. That is why we were on that street, not that street. And the sounds freak him out. And where you grabbed him was where an injury was. And he has come very far and has learned a lot since. And we had got a harness, the leashes, something that doesn't pull on his neck. My dog has been great, so great. I actually wanted to take him here tonight so he would just fall asleep during this meeting. But I didn't because who knows what's going on. But if you're going to judge anybody, you kind of got to see what you're talking about. And you would have known that my dog is just a big puppy, like a big individual. He's grown, he was young at the time when this was happening, and he's older and tired. Okay, thank you. Uh, and why is it? Chief, do you have any? I know you've submitted a list of incidents that we have in the record. Do you have any comments? Well, that's what you said. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you were about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. You may proceed. Uh, so I'm not sure even where where to begin. This this started about March, somewhere around March of last year, um, and this this isn't isolated to Laura Mountain Road or anywhere around Denise's house or Weber Road. This this spans the the width of the town for the most part. We we've, we've had complaints about the dog being. Uh, with Denise on the property, people calling saying Denise can't control the dog, she won't get the dog off the property. Um, she let the dog go, she let the leash go, the dog came onto the property. She's wandering around the property trying to get the dog. We've got videos after videos, we've got testimony from people. Um, we've, we've got a court hearings where Denise has admitted that she can't control the dog. She's admitted to me personally numerous times that she can't control the dog. She's admitted numerous times that she can't control the dog to our our officers. Um, this, these specific incidents, I gave you a list of 82 incidents that 
um, are specifically related to the dog, um, and the dog being the, the nuisance, if you will. Um, from my perspective, I, I haven't had any um, negative interactions with a dog where the dog's been aggressive or violent towards me. I've given her numerous rides home with the dog, put the dog in the in the car with with my dog in the car with me. I haven't had any issues, so uh, I, I can't say that there's any any danger from that perspective to the dog. But as far as a nuisance goes, she she clearly cannot control the dog. She clearly has no interest in trying to, to stop this behavior. She she does it. Let, let's time let's time keep again. it to the dog. Not, it, well, it's, yeah. well, not, well, not 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 it's, it's, it's state it's of mind towards the dog because these incidents continue with her walking the dog going mm -hmm. on people's properties. So if she wasn't walking the dog, the dog would be home. So it's, it's specifically you know with her. It's specifically <laughs> with her walking the dog and us getting dozens and dozens and dozens, if not hundreds, of calls. I'm saying that, saying that the dog is on somebody's property and she won't leave with the dog. That's essentially what the the the, the outline of you know what when we get called, it's it's almost always the same the same call with the dog on the property and she can't control the dog, she can't get the dog to, to leave the property. She's dragged the dog by by its leg, try to try to get it off no, the property. Right. Two, like, well, leg, like walking a human, but one leg, one paw, two paws. Mm -hmm. um, we've we've seen her like not be able to control the dog. The dog's pulling so hard where she she lets go of the dog and the dog just wanders. I've been told by by her that I have to leave the property first because the dog won't leave unless I leave. So I I have to like wait till her and the dog leave the property. So it's the the dog itself. She she can't control the dog, so that's that's why I'm saying that the, the the dog is is the issue because it can't be controlled. It's it's not from a violent perspective. It's not from an aggressive perspective. It's just it just. A stubborn dog. Okay, then. She wants to speak. For now, you, you've spoken. This is the response to what the chief had to say. You want me to speak? Yes. Now? Yes. I will also say I have not seen Jim in over a year except one time. Um, and my dog has grown once again, got bigger, but more tired, older. This was a phase where he had his collar. The only I totally can control my dog. I will tell you the collar that was on. The cops took him in, and it was over a year ago because of the neck. They brought him to a vet, and he was fine. He came back. Okay, he, that was because it was pulling. Because everyone was like, "Get him off my property," and I was scared. And I'm not gonna lie, I was probably double my weight when this was going on and I have lost a lot of weight by walking the dog. So now the dog is actually bigger than myself. So it's, you know, you can't win on this. I'm not gonna pull my dog. His head was coming out of the collar. So now I have the collar that's acceptable that has that, whatever you call it, I don't remember the name, but someone was right and nice enough to tell me to get one and I did. I also have a harness that he does not like, but I tried that as well. And don't say that I'm not trying because I am totally trying because that dog is a family dog and he's very protective of my kids. That's all, and he's not been aggressive, and I haven't seen him in over a year. So if you go by time, and today he's growing up. That's my okay, well, I'll hmm. bring my dog next time. I'll bring treat. Just, just for the record, I, I dealt with her three times within the last month <clears throat> alone. Once on this, this specific incident, and we didn't say that that was over a year. Three, three times in the last month, not to mention the hundreds of times that I've spoken with her. When, the when? Last year and a half. I saw you on West Road. That's it. Okay. I saw uh, it. Okay. Um, yeah, the only thing I wanted to reference um, about what you were saying and the situation precipitating the dog being aggressive. Um, one of the statements that we handed to you, mm -hmm. which is also somebody who's attending on Zoom, had their own altercation with the dog, did not file anything right then and there, um, but it was a situation where the dog was seemingly completely unprovoked. She was in a field with her kids and the dog charged her, jumped on her, was not under any exactly. control. Um, you can read the full statement. Okay, well, I'd like, I, I'd like to I, I don't want your testimony with someone else. Sure. Uh, you can get it directly. Like, that's what you want to see that in the comments of those that so that this time you have comments of those. Yeah. Appreciate it. I'm gonna I just want to say so that is not a thing I've talked about. Thanks a lot. Uh, okay, we 
we've been handed several other witness statements. We're making copies now for you, so you can see. Thank you, thank you so, so much. So you can see what is being done. Uh, I think what I'd like to do next is get commentary from people who have already sent something in as far as a complaint or the statement. Uh, we have. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Julie. Yes. Do you have any questions? Do you have any questions? The audio is cutting in and out. Sorry. Sorry. Do you have any questions for anyone who has spoken so far? Not yet. Okay. Thank you. So. We can get brief statements from people who have, as I said, who have already sent in a complaint or been a sub a person who made a call to the police, trying to avoid just getting people coming in and piling on. But if someone's already on record, I think we'd like to hear from them in support of what. Except there is anyone. Okay. Um, I see Cynthia Allen. I recognize you. If you can get sworn in. I'm Cynthia Allen from 28 Laurel Mountain Road. Let, let me have the clerk swear you in. Cynthia, could you raise your right hand for me, please? Do you swear that the testimony you are about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Can you speak to your encounter, encounter encounters with the dog? So our most recent encounter with the dog was um, two and a half, about two and a half weeks ago. We returned home after having been out on errands and encountered the dog and its owner coming around from the back side of our house. My husband parked our vehicle and uh, because we were all in the vehicle with um, our dog and he got out and asked the <clears throat> owner of the dog to please leave our property. She tried to discuss several other topics. He repeatedly said, you need to leave our property. You are not allowed to be on our property, please remove yourself and your dog from our property, at which point she informed him that she couldn't leave our property because her dog was going to bite my husband. Eventually, after probably a dozen or so requests repeatedly to just leave our property, she did so. Um, it was... Uh, she did not seem to have great control over the dog, although the dog did not escape this time. Uh, so this was our most recent encounter with the dog. Previously, a um, couple months before that, so earlier this year, she had run through our property. The dog was off its leash. My husband again told her to please get control of her dog and remove it from our property. And she said, oh, the dog's gonna follow me. But instead of the dog following her, what the dog started doing was growling at my husband and jumping up on my husband. The dog did not bite him, but it was not calm. It was not under control. And it um, did not respond to any verbal commands, nor was the owner willing to come and get the dog under physical control. And so, the dog probably was jumping on my husband for about 15 minutes. Finally, the dog did leave our yard, but this is not a dog that is trained. This is not a dog that responds to verbal commands. And this is not an owner that is able to control this dog. So those are my experiences, our experiences this year, this spring. I just want to clarify that. The, that last encounter that you spoke of, when did that occur, roughly? That happened, um, I believe it's in my statement, I believe it happened in April. Um, 
of this so year. It's, uh, yes. So so these are these are within less than six months. Both of my encounters or our encounters, our family's encounters. What is the property address? Where do you live? 20. Okay, I'm sorry, what was the address? I can't see you. 28 Laurel Mountain Road. Laurel Mountain. I'm trying to think of where that is. I just know that's the dirt road, and I can keep going if you're still speaking. I'm sorry, my dog. No. no, the dog, you and the dog were on our property coming around from the behind yeah. side of our house. The only way to get there is to trespass on our property. So there's no way to get onto our property yeah. other than to here. come on to it. You, you shouldn't be speaking directly to her in any case. No, I, mean, I was asking you she's finished. I'm trying to figure out where 28 is. It's the last one on the right before the before the trail. That's all I'm asking. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Because we were going on the trail. I'm sorry about that. Does anyone else there there's I'm sorry. We got yes. We have a hand. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll get the gentleman in. Could you tell me your first and last name and address, please? Karen Schmel, 33 Laurel Mountain Road. 33? Yes. Oh, okay. Did you raise your right hand, please? Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you are about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So I'll be that. Absolutely. So I'm only going to speak about the dog. And I'd like to first speak about a few other things that only involve the dog, but kind of a little bit of response to what the animal control officer said. So I live at 33 Lower Mountain, I have a six-year-old child. I also have a very large dog. Many of our neighbors all have dogs, and all of our neighbors that have dogs have them very well under control, and we all love dogs. And we're very much a dog neighborhood. My dog in any other neighborhood in any other state could be on a dangerous dog list. I have a St. Bernard mix with a poodle and she's very large. She's intimidating. I know that, so I have her under verbal control within like a three second call because I know if I'm gonna have a dog like that, I have to do that. I also know through many years of owning dogs that animals in the wild will act like animals. You can train an animal to do many things. You can train them to protect. You can train them to love. You can train them to guide. This is not any comment on the owner. It's just what I know an animal can do. Witnessing this particular dog, who I think is largely at heart a sweet animal. I have watched this dog come on my property, behind my property, where my kid has his playhouse and we often let him out in the backyard, which we don't let her come out in the backyard because of bears and coyotes and other large animals without our large dog to protect him. I've witnessed this dog and the owner come through our backyard and when confronted, it's almost as if, why wouldn't I be here? The dog can't answer that for me and that's where I have to respond. This dog attached to an owner is behaving like this. I have been at the bus stop where there is my child and four of my other neighbor's children, which I will defend by any means necessary if this dog comes at me. I've witnessed this dog be let off a leash in front of a no property sign or no, no trespassing sign, which is one of the many times I've had to call the police to say after I've said, owner, you cannot let your dog off this leash next to these chickens and ducks that live on this property. To which I was responded, I will let my dog off the leash. I'm allowed to go wherever I want. Would you let me want me to let my dog off the leash to come near you? That's why the cops place themselves <clears throat> at the bus stop for two or three days, because there are kids standing there. I don't really think that dog would have attacked me, but the dog is being trained to protect. If I can She's interrupt you for a second, <laughs> Chief. Is, does this represent a conversation that you've had? Yes. Okay. Okay. These behaviors have continued. I own a lands. I own a construction company, and, and now a landscape company as a part of my business. 
I have one of my guys that I'm bringing on training. I'm doing a lot of work on my property. The dog's walking up the road. The dog is growling. I say to the dog and the owner, hey, this isn't going to go anywhere good. Why are you going up this road right now? Probably shouldn't do that. To which the response becomes, would you like me to let my dog up the leash? That afternoon, I get a call from my landscaper that says, oh, I have that woman and their dog again. Similar behavior on the way down. An animal will act like it is trained when you domesticate them. Cows, pigs, dogs, whatever. Some of them can't be. When they are weaponized, they will act weaponized. And that is my fear, that is my neighbor's fear, as far as I can tell with every conversation I've had with a lot of people that are here, and a lot of people are not here. It's not just our children, it's our, our animals. Our dogs are out, some have invisible fences, some of the animals are under, under void, vocal command. I could bring Freya in here right now and tell her to sit, she wouldn't move until I had told her to leave. When another dog comes in and comes near my son, my very large dog will attack. If you mess with my son, she will. And that, and I hope so. That's her job. And I do not only say that out of protection for my son, which I would do anything for, it's out of protection of that dog. If you come onto our property, I don't own guns. I don't own anything else to protect my family other than a very large dog. And if your dog has become a threat on our property, all I'm asking is take into weight that with it, when we're not talking about the individuals, if the dog can't be under control, that please, how, how do we figure that out? That's, that's my statement. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you may, wait just a moment. You used the word weaponized at one point. Do you have any indication that this dog is, oh, only trained, is trained to attack or simply it's not sufficiently trained. Words coming out of the human that's controlling it. And Greg is Plus, when I Thank you. Can I speak without being interrupted? Because yeah, I'm, that's the part that is rushing. It's the dog's behavior. We've all been growled at yeah. by a dog, is one thing. At that point, that's a dog that's defending their homeowner, and you know, step back. Comments of saying someone saying, "Why would you get out of your car? Why would you do this? Why would you do X?" In no. normal circumstances, the dog is growling at me. I'm going to walk on the other side of the street. So okay, that's just, when somebody does, asks, I, I, if that, I would like a chance to respond if I might. Well, no, the you're, you're answering my question. Do you, do you have any indication that the dog was weaponized? Which was my question. When somebody says the words, "Would you like me to let my dog off the leash in an aggressive manner?" I didn't say that. That's what I'm saying. You mean but, but you've got no indication or evidence that the dog, three, to, me, three, to me, weaponized is a three dog. previous attacks on other people in the neighborhood. That's, that feels like you're using a big, muscular looking dog to scare me. Yeah, that it, feels weaponized to me. No, the question is is this weaponized to me? Fair. Is a dog that is trained? To be aggressive, as can opposed ask, as opposed to what can I, can I say this question is no, no, yeah, not give me just sure, no. sure, fair. Weaponize is a dog that has been trained to attack at a command, mm -hmm. as opposed to, as you said yourself, a dog or any animal in the wild responding as an animal. Mm -hmm. Is there? Do you? You said you, there's no indication that the dog has been trained to attack. So, so can I give my retort to that? Yes. Yeah. No, I live in the woods. Please speak. And I'm only speaking to you. That's not right. affecting me at the moment. If I'm in the woods and I'm carrying an axe yeah. because I'm a person that takes care of my property, there's no indication that my axe is going to be used as a weapon unless I verbally tell you that this is now a weapon or I make a physical move to show you that it is a weapon. You would never assume, if you knew me, that my axe is a weapon. You would assume that Kevin's probably going to cut down a tree, or Kevin's <laughs> probably going to do it, you know, do some things. If I now use that to say, or I make a move towards you with my axe, or say, would you like me to accidentally let go of my axe? That axe has become weaponized. I, 
the an axe is an inanimate object. The dog is, is not. Brad, may I interject? I, may I interject? I, I appreciate your analogy, but I'm not sure that it is. Julie, may I interject? Yes, oh, Julie, by all means. Yes. Hi. Um, I'm, I'm hearing the um, debate about the word weaponized. I might say that it is that the dog is potentially being used as a threat because the dog has not been trained not to attack. Yes. The dog yeah. is being used as a threat. Would you like me to let the dog off the leash is implying that the dog might do something. It's not saying the dog will, but it is implying that the dog might. And that's a threat of a sort. It's not necessarily weaponization as in aggressive training, but it's, I can't control my dog. My dog might bite you. Would you like me to let it off the leash? So it's a threat is what is how I would describe it. I highly appreciate your objectivity in this. I feel those words that you use, weaponized our fear tactics and spreading fear in this I, town, which I absolutely am not doing. I've lived in this town for 23 years with three dogs. Two dogs were never unleashed. Just, we live in the woods, there's bears. You accept that when you move here. You're gonna be living with nature, nature is there. I don't go to you, would you like me to take off the leash? You, I'm sorry, you feel this way, but you were gardening on the side of the okay, road. Okay, No, please, I have I, to defend myself on this. He was gardening. Address your remarks Okay, here. he was gardening and he said, and I'm gonna speak for your wife with the big dog as well. That was on Weber Road, not okay. your street. Yep, this okay, way. I'm not talking to him because it's not a big deal. So what he said was your dog is growling at me, okay? I'm in control of my dog walking on the street, not on his property. And my dog growled at him. I said, would you like me jokingly? Like, hi, nice to meet you. I'm a very friendly person. And I can tell you that most of this town, I haven't seen him in a while, would tell you that I'm a friendly person as well. Now, I was joking. Would you, what if I growled at you? Would you say, it was just, it sounds so funny to hear. You're not controlling your dog. When you're walking him on a leash and he growls, I hear people swear all the time. Do it, are you in control of your mouth? It sounds okay. ridiculous. To okay, me. okay. So that is your characterization of that. Yes. I'm sorry. Uh, do you have anything new? Yes, I just sorry we don't get along, but I would love to be it, It's not about getting along. I just want truth to be told. Fear. It, it, sounds like fear. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If if the characterization of my wife is not even here, and her response is, if we are not allowed to talk about the people involved, we're only allowed to talk about the dog, and I'm really tired of hearing about from the person that we're talking about all of what we do wrong, and that the fault here is everybody else in the neighborhood. We are the ones doing things wrong, and we can't respond to the fact that, 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 that that's, what to, that's, that's what we're trying to we're trying to establish. We're, we're, we's, we're just we're trying to establish the facts, and that's yeah, so what you're getting. You get facts, some people saying one thing, and some people. We're going to have and facts. A situation that I that has happened like this. I've called into the police. I've I've said, look, because I hate calling the police at this point. They're probably tired of hearing my name over the same thing. Like this has nothing to do with the people involved, other than do not mess with my neighbor's children or mine. And when your dog is becoming a thing that is doing that, I will do anything to protect them. We all love animals in this neighborhood. Well, mine too. And, and that, please do not say that the dog was not aggressive. The dog was not like my landscaper is not just some random person this is somebody i've known for 25 years who's now coming to start a part of my business with me but it's like jesus dude i did not feel safe being inside the road with this animal i would have felt safe with that animal if i was walking it okay like, I, so I, you're judging I, no excuse me. yeah <laughs> sorry excuse me i we've heard from you we've got many other people to all right i will be glad to hear from uh, I see someone identified as Luke. Hi, Luke. Hello. There we go. 
Hi. It's actually Christine, my wife, who had the incident, so she'll. It's Lou, so that's all I have to go. Yep, by. that's fine. <laughs> All right, I can't hear you very well. Your first and last name, and that Christine Stragowski, 39 Laurel Mountain Road. 39. Could yes. you read for me, please? Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you are about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you, God. Yes, I do. I'd like to share about two incidents, um, both of which were reported to an authority at the time that they happened. The first incident was um, over a year ago, March of 2022. I had driven up to the trail on Laurel Mountain Road that goes to the water treatment plant because one of my daughters and a friend were taking a walk up there. So I had driven up to pick, pick them up. So I parked at the trail um, where Laurel Mountain turns onto Grass Hill. And I got out of my car to walk a little ways down the trail to see if I could see my daughter. So I was a little ways, like 10 yards down the trail. And the dog came running up to me and I was not near Denise. Um, I, as she wouldn't come on the trail because of the ice. So I was down the trail, the dog was um, jumping on me. It was barking at me, it was growling at me. I had scratch marks down my arm and leg from where it was jumping at me. Um, I could not get back to my car for 10 minutes because the dog was like jumping on me and I couldn't get to safety. And that was where she was as well. And the whole time she was not able to call him off of me. So for 10 minutes, the dog was jumping on me and barking at me aggressively and she could not get him. She didn't come and get him. She couldn't call him away from me. And I finally made it back to my car. Me, what, was she attempting to call him or was she? I think she was attempting to call me, calm me down because I was panicking. We sensed her fear. Okay. She was on the thing. It was a nice storm. We shouldn't have been okay, on the Okay, but <laughs> she, I, I was there picking up my daughter. You was not trying to call the dog <laughs> off. Take care of it. No. Whatever okay. she was doing wasn't working um, because it wouldn't, I couldn't. It wouldn't stop jumping on me. Then, and I did report that to the animal control officer and he did go and speak with the family the next day as far as I know. That was the first incident. The second incident, which I reported that day later to the police, I was on a walk with um, Colette Alanik and we witnessed um, Miss Donahue on a walk with the dog and she walked with the dog to the place where my property, um, where Laurel Mountain Road and joins Weber Road. So it's where my property ends. Um, there's um, like a trail, uh, it's just where yeah. some state land comes onto the road. Yeah. So she walked with the dog on a leash a little ways into the woods where she apparently released the dog off, let it go. She went jogging up the road a little ways and I don't know, went on a walk. And then eventually I, she went back home and then the dog went running back home. Um, and I did call to report that it's this, a similar incident to what um, Kevin reported of witnessing her just sort of letting the dog go and then walking off, I guess. So um, yeah, and again, I had called the police about that incident as well. And that was more recently, that was within the last um, month or two, two months maybe. That when? What are you talking about? The ice storm was last winter. This, this was a second this incident. This was a second incident that was this spring. Okay. That's fine. But everybody else does. But I'm okay with that. But may I speak now? Are you done? Uh, it happens, quick, right? quick, quickly. Yes. I will totally do it quickly. I will say I'm a mom. My kids are grown. And I understand you have your hands full with your life. I get it. They're young. Your daughter was left unintended in the car while you were trying to get your older ones on the ice. I saw that. I was my balance was off at the time. I was trying to get it as well, and we were both tense, trying not to fall. And I know I understand your daughter is very cute. She actually pet the dog. They had a good relationship. It was fine. It was 
before I was walking up the hill, not on the property. It went well. Um, I think the point is that the dog was not called off of me and it was yeah, not so able to happen. It's a moot point. The dog the was not jumping. called off of the me, dog was barking and jumping yeah. aggressively. Yeah, you don't have to call the dog and it's jumping on my wife. It doesn't matter where it happened. What the other circumstances were. May I speak now? Every My dog is attacked by three dogs not on leashes that, when I walk up that road, okay? That it's okay is, for that's that? Not, that's not relevant to it this. It is. Stuff. No. Because if my dog has to be on a leash, those three dogs have to be on a leash as well, that, right? That so is not relevant to this. It was, it was on Google Mountain that, Road, okay? It was on a street. In, the, in any my case. Dog, in any case, that is that. But file that, a complaint. Yep. Let's see how many people. It is totally relevant. It is. No. It is. No. I'm sorry. He said, not. bear with me. And he has come very far and he has never no. attacked. He's no. not. But go on. And I am fine. Okay. But it's not okay for me to walk up from the street. And that Colette Lee. Wait, excuse me. Okay. No, yeah. one more incident on defense and white that's not here. I was on Weber Road walking my dog without anybody else near me on the road. And she said, get away from me because she had her big dog. I was not stalking her. She was on the same path as me when I was doing the right thing, which I have done several times. So the dog in training, not okay. good. Thanks. Cool. Okay, we've got uh, Helena. Again, I don't have, uh, I'll, I'll get to everybody. I'm just finding think, people who, sorry. who've got hands up and have to go. Where, where did she go? Uh, she's now third down. <laughs> Oh, uh, Helena. Hi. Yes. Hi. Could you tell me your first and last name and address, please? Helena Farrell, 26 Grass Hill Road, Waitley. Farrell, 26 Grass Hill? Yep. Okay. And Helena, could you raise your right hand for me, please? Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you are about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? Yes. Yes. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Thank you. So I've had four encounters with Denise and her dog on my property. We've reported all of them to the police. Um, I think that the what needs to be stated at this point in light of the abundance of like we're not going anywhere with this dialogue with Denise like you're getting from her the same response which is oh it's the other people what the other people were doing i'm fine my dog is fine don't see this, 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 like this is this, the hearings about the dog not about Denise. thank you well no, you the, the select board needs to keep in mind the context of this situation which is that there has been years have passed with the context of issues from that household and i understand that this is about uh, the dog the household, I, I'm, I'm sorry the household is nothing this is about the dog please describe your encounters with the dog thank you well my encounters with the dog also involve intimidation regarding the dog. And so I'm just asking the select board to keep in mind that there is intimidation happening and that the dog is part of the tactic of intimidation. And you need to give us an avenue for communicating this to the town because you have a unified body of people here and you have abundant evidence in the conversation that we need some traction for our safety and well being because there's a long pattern of intimidation that's happening. A lot of people are suffering right now. And the dog, as the chief of police has already stated, the dog is overall a decent animal but like it is a nuisance and when is it going to escalate to the point of being dangerous and when is the intimidation going to escalate to the point of being of being dangerous and people actually getting hurt i mean we had somebody which like lives in that household driving their car revving their engine excuse, on our excuse, road. Me, excuse me excuse me that that's not relevant person's not okay. here Again, no please quiet thank you the this is about the dog and your interactions with the dog. That is the testimony we're going to get. This board has no jurisdiction over any other 
interactions between families or anything else. And certainly this hearing has no bearing. Yeah, that's, it's not relevant to this to this hearing. So well, it is relevant you. because you people are, are afraid. No, no, no. Legally, it is not relevant to this hearing. This hearing is about interacting with the dog. And can you describe? Can you describe any intimidation that involves the dog? I mean, I think there's abundant testimony, which is that the dog is led onto people's property. It was led onto my property three times. It was led through my door and into my house one time with Denise trailing behind. I mean, it's the same story over and over again. And tell us, tell us your story led into your house, led onto your property. That's what we want to hear about the dog. Yeah, I've, I've provided that and written testimony to the select board via email. So okay. we, we have that in the record. Okay. We have Thank it in the you. record. And I mean, it just. That, that, no, I mean, no, I don't know please, please. You're, you're Can not. Can we put in the record that that yeah, alone is a form of intimidation? That, no, no, we can't, but I'm, I, I am. Like, I am, shit, was in the middle of saying that's not appropriate, please. I'm trying to, I don't recall. You can get after the hearing. You can get, stop, get, get, get you, no, I, I mean, I, I think what's relevant is the experience. Please, the Everyone, experience. Chair, otherwise, please be quiet. Uh, okay. Sir. Who else do we have that wants to make a comment? Uh, SB has a hand up and, and green miles. Yeah, uh, Lipton. Lipton. Roger. Roger. Hi. Okay. Hello. Um, my name is Roger. My name is Roger Lipton. I live at Nine Laurel Mountain Road. You'd like to swear okay. me? In. Yeah, I'll swear you. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you are about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. I do. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, for those who don't know me, I'm on the zoning board of appeals in the town of Waitley. I've been the chairperson probably for 30 years, so I uh, respect the, the chairman's difficult job of keeping order, and I would ask everybody to follow his instructions. And so my testimony relates to my personal um, experiences with uh, Denise Donahue and her dog, whose name is Miles. I know that the dog's name is Miles because when the state police arrested Denise at my property on August uh, 25, 2022, uh, one of the state troopers asked her the name of the dog and she said the dog's name was Miles. And uh, I would also add by way of background, I'm a lawyer and that's my firm's uh, name that appears on Green Miles Lipton. I've been a lawyer in Northampton for 40 years. During the pandemic, I started practicing law at home primarily. <clears throat> and uh, the first time I met Denise Donahue, it was when she appeared at our home in March of 2022 at the back door. I was working on a case as I do eight hours a day. Uh, no one ever appears at the back door. And she appeared at the back door uh, claiming to have lost on our property her bank card, which is somewhat absurd. We have uh, a little less than five acres. And uh, we politely told her no one found the card here with your name on it. And if she ever had any business here uh, again, to uh, politely come to the front door and ring the doorbell. Um, to my surprise, a few days later, there was a ring at the doorbell during the business hours and I interrupted what I was doing on my cases and went to the front door and there was Donahue and uh, with, with her dog, both times with Miles. And she uh, claimed at that point to have lost a wedding ring. And we have a 200 foot driveway and we're off the road a, a bit. And it, it was just an absurd um, type of statement. And I, I went outside onto the driveway and I was angry. And I told her to leave our property and never appear again. At which point she told me, and I'm looking at my statement, which is on the record as the June 13, 2000 statement that I submitted through uh, the town administrator. Uh, she told me that Miles would come at me if she let go of her leash. And um, uh, members of the board, I submit that was a threat, an intentional threat um, that I took 
personally, and I informed her that I was a lawyer, member of the bar, and that if that occurred, I would sue her personally, uh, that I knew where she lived, and she was somewhat surprised about that. If, uh, if you can excuse me, can you can we get to what the dog did? The dog, <laughs> the dog at that point was passive, and I was glad for that fact because it was a big dog, and I don't know what it would have done to me. Um, but I've studied the statute, the dog statute under which this hearing is conducted, and I don't see a definition of nuisance in there. And so I would submit that it's the board's uh, discretion and wisdom to determine what nuisance is. And I would also submit that you've heard enough yeah. evidence already to uh, make a determination that this dog, in conjunction with its owner, uh, constitutes a nuisance under the statute and that you're entitled to take all remedies that you believe are uh, available to you. In, you. In, in response, to the, uh, and I'll let you finish in a minute. I have provided, been provided by our council definitions according to the law, and I will read them now. A dangerous dog is a dog that either, one, without justification, attacks a person or domestic animal, causing physical injury or death, or two, behaves in a manner that a reasonable person would believe poses an unjustified imminent threat of physical injury or death to a person or to a domestic or owned animal. A nuisance dog is a dog that one, by excessive barking or other disturbance, is a source of annoyance to a sick person residing in the vicinity, or two, by excessive barking, causing damage or other interference, a reasonable person would find such behavior disruptive to one's quiet a peaceful enjoyment, or three, has threatened or attacked livestock, a domestic animal, or a person, but such threat or attack was not a grossly disproportionate reaction under the circumstances. So we, we do have definitions in the law of nuisance and dangerous. Uh, to that point, I, I did, to that point, I did feel threatened. I definitely felt threatened. You okay. felt threatened when you I was holding no. Okay. Okay, is that, that, do you have anything else to add? Are you talking to me or him? No, I'm talking to him. Okay, you're looking at me, otherwise. I'm, well, I'm looking at the screen, right, okay. screen here. It's, but I will, what, I, what I would add is that um, in direct um, connection with this Donahue uh, and her dog and, and the apparent un, un, unfettered trespassing that she engages in, we took out a, um, a state no trespassing order that was served upon her. We upgraded our ADT system to have cameras, and we have, uh, and we've shared this with the police chief, um, video evidence of her when we weren't home, perusing our home, circling it, and allowing Miles to, to pee on our back door, which is, if it's not a nuisance or that's not a danger, it's, a, it's an insult. It's, a, it's an insult, and it's, it's a... The whole, the whole De Denise Donahue story is, is amazingly contrary to the vibe, if you will, that exists on Laurel Mountain Road and Grass Hill Road, which is just a completely peaceful neighborhood out in the woods, out in the country, everything you'd want. And then this um, uh, foreign uh, uh, is, is, is hell bent on being disruptive. That's, that's what I have to say. Who's without characterizing? The person we're talking about, the dog, once again. Once again, we're talking quick, about the dog. Quick do you have any yeah, other I do have a well, keep it short. Um, this is old news. Um, his house is the last house before a trail that everybody else walks on. And my dog got off the leash. Everybody doesn't have their dog on the leash. You're done with the trail. It needs loose. I already dealt with this. I've had no issues with this um, lawyer who's um, speaking right now. I don't even know who anybody is. I just know there's trails beyond their property. And nobody moves into a place knowing blueprints of people's property when you own five acres. I mean, there was a deer, there was a bear. My dog chases rabbits. He chased two deer on this road. There's a lot of nature going on, and I love kids. And I had three grow up in this town with big dogs all over the place and not a threat, and I got through it. Okay, thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it, though. Uh, yes, in the room. Here. Amy? Oh, sorry. You don't Your name and address, please? Michael Mason, 88 Conway Road. 
I didn't know if you wanted to take that other person. Well, now trying to get okay. Oh, go back and forth. May I respond to that guy about the wedding ring? I no. lost a lot of weight. I'm sorry, Thank 88 you. Conway Road. Thank you. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you are about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So, yeah, I do. Okay, what did I say? Yeah, yeah. So, um, like the chief said earlier, uh, I'm not really sure where to begin. Um, the dog and the owner have been on our property many, many times. Um, their residence is a good two, two and a half miles from our house. And like the first couple who spoke, our driveway is a dirt driveway that's more than a quarter of a mile long. Uh, we live in the middle of the woods in the middle of nowhere, basically. Um, somebody would have to make great effort to actually get to our house and find our house. Um, the dog and the owner have made that effort many times. <clears throat> I'm only going to talk about the couple of significant incidents that occurred in my house because talking about all of them would take this board's time for the rest of the evening. Um, the first incident uh, happened a um, little over a year ago, probably, when uh, Denise came to our house for the first time with the dog, talking about what the gentleman earlier uh, was brought up that she had lost, I believe it was a wedding ring. Um, so uh, after that, she walked around our house. I didn't think anything of it. I didn't know anything about uh, her and the dog at the time. So we just let it go. She came up to our house, I think the very next day, we have her on video camera and she looked like what the uh, other gentleman was just pointing out, like she was casing our house almost. She was looking through windows up on our back deck. Um, the dog was leading her around the property. Now, the third time she came up and my 12-year-old daughter was home alone, she knocked on the side door and she gave an excuse that the dog was injured and needed animal control. My daughter luckily found the number for animal control, called the animal control officer and had him on the phone and he was described, she was, he was asking her to describe for her what was occurring, what the dog looked like. While they were doing that, the animal control officer, I believe, figured out what the, who the dog was and who the person was. And he asked that uh, she hand the phone to Denise. As soon as my daughter unbolted the door, the dog blasted its way into my home, passed Sorry. my daughter, stop quiet. Sorry. Passed my daughter into my living room, jumped up on my couch, knocked over things on the coffee table, and was running around my living room. Thankfully, the animal control officer heard the ruckus, what was going on, called the police. You have a fantastic police department, raced up to my house to deal with the situation. Luckily, she opened the front door and the dog pulled Denise out the front door. Uh, I believe it was Sergeant Bates who showed up to help. After that, we started to figure out exactly what was going on and what we were dealing with. So at that point, we swore on a trespass order. Maybe a week or two later, Denise was up at the house again. She's on video again. Um, this time I was on the treadmill and just both my, both my children, my daughter and my youngest child were upstairs alone. Denise was in the front yard with the dog pulling her around. At this point, I got on the video, the ring camera and I yelled at her to leave. She didn't leave. She is on video releasing her dog or it pulling from her grasp, as she sometimes uh, explains, it going into my garage. So at that point, I raced up the, the steps and we had a confrontation in my front yard. Um, she, she was basically telling me that she could not control the dog uh, and it was pulling her around the property. She spent another who knows how long there. She was there long enough actually for the sergeant, I believe, or whoever from Waverly PD to show up again. I think it may have been a trooper that time to locate her on the property and actually deal with the situation. I'm not going to go into the criminal aspect of things. Um, she has as little control over the dog as she has over herself in this hearing. Okay. Um, there are people who are afraid. You just read the statute. Chapter 140, section 136 clearly defines what a nuisance dog is and what a dangerous dog is. There is only one part of the nuisance dog law that talks about injuring someone else. And that is when something disproportionate happens to the dog, i.e. if someone's beating the animal and it bites you, you deserve to be bitten. That's a nuisance dog. There is no other part of that statute that talks about anything that you could consider a nuisance. This dog 
is defined within the law perfectly as a dangerous dog. It has injured other people and there is a threat of injury for future people. That's a dangerous dog. Now, you have to find it a dangerous dog before this night's over. I know the statute. Now, you are given many different things that you can do within that statute once you decide that it's a dangerous dog. I don't think that there's any person in this room that wants to see the dog euthanized. I don't think it's the dog's fault. Okay, that is one of your options, however. But there are several other options that I think most of the people in this room and many of the people on Zoom would be amenable to to keep the dog and the niece off of our property so that we can keep our children and our animals safe. That's all I have to say, but there's zero chance, zero, that I'm staying here for questioning my heart. Let's go. I'm not here to question you, but may I speak? He's no. fine. Good night. 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 Good is it not? And you can give your opinion. It's a dog, it's a dog. It's a dog. But do not tell, do opinion. not tell me you are, that you that I have to find or we have to find something. If you find you a just dog, a nuisance dog, and not a dangerous dog, no. I will challenge you, and I guarantee you the lawyer. That is fine. You can challenge. You do not tell us, and you what will absolutely have to lose. Do. I'm telling you right now, you're going do. to lose if you do that. Do not Let's tell go. us what we have to do and when we have to do. I Thank think you. his sentiments are being coupled by pretty much everybody else you're hearing. That. Please. Sir, I know the statute. I'm just telling you what the I, law I, says. I'm, I'm, I'm not you debating you do. on the merits. I'm, 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 I'm telling you what the I'm law says. Yeah. I'm questioning okay. your so question. I take it back. The, I take it back. I need to tell you what you have to do. I'm telling you what the law says. And this is old news. The law. Your police department, by the way, is fantastic. They are. Thank you both. May I see? Briefly, yes. Okay, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And um, going for your information. That everyone is included and everybody wants to work with each other. Nope, that is old news. That was when the dog was younger. It was over a year and a half ago. And by the way, how I ended up in that house was it was pouring and freezing out when I was in there. The footage um, broke, and she did answer the door. It was pouring out, and it was looking for shelter and got a ride home. And another time that uh, we were on that, I they pulled out a gun. On me. I'm sorry, that's kind of scary. <laughs> I mean, this so is about, about gun the dog, dog, not about... How many times are we going to say it was over a year and a half ago when there's been 10 <laughs> years? Sorry. You, I apologize to be disrespectful to you, but I'm just no, you're in lies. So you're, want unity. It's not a question of disrespectful. We need unity. To, peak, to peak decorum and rules, and that means not blurting out when, when we feel like it from anyone. Anyway. Uh, we've got SD. You can be sworn in. Give us your name, address, and be sworn in, please. Hi, my name is Esty McCoy. I live at Four Strip Road in West Whateley. Esty, could you raise your right hand for me, please? Yes. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you are about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, I do. Okay, go ahead. Thank you for having me. I'd like to make five brief points, and these are all involved in this being a nuisance in the neighborhood that's been causing fear and concern. I moved to the area in 2019 in the spring, shortly after which I encountered this neighbor with the dog in my driveway and was you know, introducing ourselves. The dog proceeded to approach me and get on my back and scratch me and break the skin, and the owner had zero control over the dog and was so flustered by the experience, they could not apologize properly for what the dog had done to me. Um, after that, I've had two incidences where this person has trespassed on my property without asking to. The first time we said, please, if you ever need to come on our property, please ask first. There should be no need, but please ask. We have trails, but they're not open to the public. Since that first time we asked, she, they, she and the dog have been on our property twice. We have camera footage. We've offered this to the police. And we have called the police on the times that she has trespassed with the dog on our property. The reason this is a concern for us is we have two children who like to be able to play freely in the neighborhood and not be concerned about looking around if this dog is on our property. We also have, until recently, two dogs. 
and currently a puppy who is really well under our control, either with voice or with a beeping command that we use if necessary. If it goes after someone, we call it right back, has never hurt anybody. So I understand that it can be done, that you can control your dog. We have so many animals in this neighborhood, dogs that are friendly, some that are on electrical, you know, invisible fences. No other dog has been a problem. Most dogs play with our dogs and interact in a very friendly and safe manner. But it doesn't feel fair that we have to feel unsafe in our neighborhood, on our property, the entire time we've lived in this neighborhood. And I'm a nurse, so my primary focus is the safety of my children and my family and my pets and those of my neighbors. And the time I realized was a while ago when the dog scratched me, but I have repeatedly heard from other neighbors of recent events, and it just continues to feel stressful and like there has to be something done so we can live at peace. Thank you for listening. Okay. Once again, over a year ago, he's grown. <laughs> Thank okay. you. Can I add one thing? Yes. Okay. Last fall, I was running with my children down Haydenville Road, and the dog was in the driveway, approached us, growling, looking very aggressive. There was no one there to recall the dog or to control the situation. We felt right. very unsafe. We said, please stay, please stay. The dog kept approaching. As we came up Weber Road, we kept looking back to see if the dog was following us and felt very unsafe. There is no one there to control that dog. Yeah. I'm finished. If this was such a problem, why is it a year and a half ago being brought up just now? And he's older now. He's probably he's done. Okay, we, 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 we heard that everything all already. So, yep. Well, that's you what you said. Why it's all set. Okay. I did my can, I request, can I request that Denise not speak unless she is called upon? Yeah, I, pre I appreciate what you what you have to say, but you are interrupting. Please wait until you are called upon by the chair. Thank you. Do we have anyone else who wants to make a comment? Thanks. Uh, Mary. No, you're you're Mary. muted. Mary, you're you're muted. Sorry, Mary Shanley Kerber, and I live at 12 Grass Hill Road in Wayton. Part-time resident. Mary, could you raise your right hand for me, please? <laughs> Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you are about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, it will. Go uh, on. At the end of May, I um, was uh, at the house, and we have a, a deck. Uh, Excuse me for interrupting. End of May this year? Yes. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah. And we have sure. a deck that is pretty high up off the ground, and I heard somebody tapping at the door, so I came to the door. My dog is reactive to strange dogs, so she was carrying on. And I, so I, for that reason, I went outside uh, rather than have invite her in, as I would with most neighbors. Um, and she and the dog were there, and she told me that the dog was chasing my cat, but I don't have a cat. So I explained that to her, and I said, no cat. Um, and I wanted to go back in my house to get my dog uh, away from the glass door. And she wasn't able to understand, I think, that I wanted to get past her. And the dog was sitting right in front of my door and I couldn't get in. So I started to go towards my door and the dog jumped up on me and pushed me up against my railing. So I figured, well, the, this wasn't going to work. So I stepped around a, a barbecue that's on my deck and moved away from my door and called the dog to me. And at that point, the dog looked like it was, it was getting into a, 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 a warning or a, a protective position. It kept on looking up at uh, its owner. And I felt that's when I started to feel threatened. I, I, I was pushed up against the railing earlier and that was not a, a safe condition for me. But besides that, I could see that the dog was feeling unsure. It was feeling um, anxious and it looked like it wanted to protect her. So she eventually the dog passed me and I just ran in the house and she followed the dog. And just like it did with Roger, it saluted the umbrella on my deck and took a nice peek and kept on going. So that's my experience with the dog. Thank you. You're welcome. Do we 
have anyone else who wants to make a comment or a statement? Julie, do you have any further questions at this juncture? No. Is it okay to ask a question? Sorry. If we submitted a written, if we've written submitted a written statement, it, will you review that, or do we need to speak? The the written statements are in our record, and at least I know I have read all of the statements that came in before today. I have not read everything that came in today yet, Julie. Have, if you've been able to to read the yes. various complaints, okay, so. Yep. They're in the record, and anything that's been received before today has been noted and considered. Then I have nothing new to add. Okay. If we've got Thank you. no one else wishing to make a comment, I would like to, to make a motion that we close the evidentiary portion of the hearing. Do I have a second? Second. Second. You got it. Please. On the motion, Julie, yes or no? Yes. Yes, okay, the evidentiary portion of the hearing is closed. We now move to explain what that, what, what that means. That means that we're done taking testimony and we now move to a phase where the select board, in this case, the two voting members deliberate on what actions we should take, particularly with regard to the, the event, which is the cause of complaint, but also taking into account the other issues regarding this dog. In that you're not gonna accept testimony, additional evidence, right. testimony or comments or anything. Right, no, a conversation it, between the two select right. board members. Right, essentially this is now a conversation between two select board members. The, I just had a question. Um, I believe one of the things allowed under the law is that the select board can ask for a copy of the homeowner insurance policy of the dog owner. Um, and I would request that that be provided. Um, I'm not aware of that regulation. We'll look into it and if it's. Can you repeat that? I did not hear her. Can you repeat that? I didn't hear her. Providing a copy of the dog owner's homeowner's insurance. And I do not know oh. what, what the law is on that. And we will look okay. into it. Thank you. Um, play, go, excuse me. It's done. Sorry, I kind of want to know. What there, there, are, there are at this point two yes. people, myself and Julie Wagner. Okay. That's it. Can I put on the record that this gentleman in the back of the room is like staring me down right now during this piece of Like, I, I'm not comfortable with the, the rest of us are asked to be peaceful, but we're obviously being attempts to intimidate during a, a peaceful matter. It's Can I leave? I think I have to go. It's not comfortable. It, is this over? No. We, oh. we, we, the board is now going to discuss the, the issue of whether this is a nuisance dog or a dangerous right. dog mm -hmm. and either reach a decision or postpone and make a decision at a future okay. meeting. Have, you well, do not have to stay, right. you may stay. Okay. But uh, I if, again, and if you are having problems with someone staring at you through the door, you can move up. So you, that person I can't like, I, that, that's, that, 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 you, if you have a problem with that, move up so you can't see the person and the person can't see you. That's it. Uh, the first special question I think we have to arrive at is, was there, was there an attack or an incident involving this dog that involves adjudication? Uh, in my mind, given the testimony of the the complainants and supporting evidence of other similar events from other people, I would say that there is ev sufficient evidence that there was 
a something that needs to be addressed by this board. Julie? Yes, I would agree. Next question to be dealt with then is whether we are going to deem this a dangerous dog or a nuisance dog because the remedies that might be available to us differ based on the characterization and the finding regarding the dog. Uh, Julie, do you have any comment well, on that? Well, personally, I would have a difficult time finding the dog to be a nuisance dog because the definition of a nuisance dog, the third definition of the nuisance dog includes a dog that perhaps had attacked or been aggressive when provoked, typically on the owner's property. This is a dog that has been on other people's property. Um, I don't see anything that says anything about what to do with a dog that consistently is on other people's property and is um, aggressive or growling or possibly jumping or biting. But I, I think that nuisance dog, unfortunately, doesn't entirely cover it. I'm open to discussion, but that's my, that's my opening thought. Okay. Uh, I, I would agree. I think the, under the definition of the dangerous dog, uh, number two, if such a dog behaves in a manner that a reasonable person would believe poses an unjustified imminent threat of personal injury or death. Well, probably not death in this case. To but a injury, person. yeah, but, injury. But I would say that we've heard sufficient testimony regarding this dog that people do feel imminent threat of injury from this dog as, as it has been uh, handled mm -hmm. over time. No, I'm sorry, we're not taking any more questions. No more. It's not a question. No more comment. But I may make the comments. No. Yes. No. That I have not walked the dog. No, no, you, no, 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 sorry. no. Why? Because the evidentiary part of this hearing is over. Oh. The only people talking now are Julie yeah. Wagner and myself. That's it. I agree. But I just have no. to. No, don't. If, yeah, if she doesn't like if she doesn't like the decision, she can appeal. But at this point, but it's I just you and me. Well, okay. you. Uh, Go on. Right now, no talking. one else is talking. Two people can talk. The clerk, if we so have a question, if, I can watch it in the morning. if you want to watch it in the morning, you can do that. You can I stay. You can leave. That is your call. Thank you. Uh, so I would move that we, based on the evidence we have heard, both regarding the April I'm not 7th. yet I'm not ready to move or second. Is that okay? Can we discuss further? Okay. Uh, well, I, I, I can make a motion. We can discuss the motion. Okay. Uh, Go for it. That we can have discussion after the motion is made before we vote on the motion. Okay. Uh, I, I, I would move based on the evidence we've heard regarding the complaint of April 7th and other incidents regarding the dog that we deem this dog a dangerous dog. Mm -hmm. Do you second that motion? And then we can... I do not second that motion yet. Okay. Further, the further okay. discussion that I wanted to have is that I, I agree with Chief Savini that this is probably a dog that's a good dog at heart. I understand that Denise cares for her dog a great deal. Um, those of us who have dogs care for our dogs a great deal. We don't always see when the dog is our dog, how it appears and how it acts with other people. And it's our responsibility as dog owners to ensure that the dog is well-trained under our control as the dog's owners, either voice control or on leash, because other people in the world cannot be expected to understand the dog the way we think we understand the dog. It is our job to present the dog to the world as a loving, 
confident, gentle creature. And if the dog is not presented to the world that way, it's not the dog's fault necessarily. That's what I wanted to say, that I think there's a great deal more going on here that the dog is not at heart a dangerous dog, but the dog has been allowed to become threatening. That's what I would say. I, I, I would not disagree, but our charge in this, we have to designate based on- those I know we do, but I wanted to extrapolate. <laughs> With that said, I will second your motion. Okay. Paul, any other comment on, on that? No. Okay. Not yeah, all in favor of the motion that Miles be deemed a dangerous dog. Julie? Yes. Me? Yes. Okay. Miles has been deemed a dangerous dog based on the evidence and testimony we have heard. We now need to determine do we want to what sort of remedy or uh, action mm -hmm. that we can or should take. I have a I have a question first for Brian if he was able to discover the information or if we may ask Denise a question is the dog neutered Um I was um the dog is licensed as intact Licensed as intact so has not been neutered okay Uh So one of the one of the things that we can do is require that the dog be neutered, which can often change the dog's behavior toward the, a gentler behavior. That's one of a list of I think six or seven things that we can do. Uh, so I just wanted to know that information to know if that was an option, or if he had already been fixed. From what I've heard, I don't know. That may lessen the problem. I don't know if that solves the problem. Don't of, think solve. I don't think solve one you know, one of a number of potential remedies. The, the problem as I see it is that the dog is not under control when out in the world. Yep. Even when at the end of a leash, the dog is not necessarily under control. Agreed. Uh, and to me, the only answer to that would be not to allow the dog out into the world. That would be to to confine the, the dog that the dog remain on the owner's property. Um, to me, that that is what would solve the problem of the dog being out and around and not under control. Uh, I don't know what you think, but go ahead. I think it's a big dog and a small property. It's a huge property. I don't know it, what to do it here. So, yeah. It, it, no, it, the, the property is an acre and a half, two acres. So the, there would be ample, should be ample room on the owner's property. Is the property be, fenced? Doesn't have to be, and I haven't walked the that, dog. In that, that, that is, that's not for us to, it is, to it's determine. Okay. It's that not, is, okay. Okay. That, yeah, that's Denise, not, that's not it's our just me and Fred. To do the logistics, it's to arrive at a, a suitable action. Um, and to me, based on what we've heard and what has gone on, that is the only action that would preclude these things, assuming that it was obeyed as it should be, I'm willing that, to that, that that is the way it would keep the dog away 
from threatening the neighbors, the threat being that, which has deemed it to be, led us to call it dangerous. Um, okay, so when we're talking about keeping the dog on the property, if um, since I'm on my cell phone, it's hard for me to switch back and forth between the documentation uh, and the Zoom meeting. I believe there's something about it being humanely restrained, so we would want to ensure that it's, you know, not further chafing its neck on the leash, et cetera, or, or on the collar. Um, uh, I I don't think that we really need to go any further than, than confining to the properties. But the property is large enough that if there's a fence or that- Oh, there's a run. Confined yeah, to, that, that, confined that, to that, the property. If, 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 if there is a problem that comes later on with the, we'll how, the dog, how the dog is dealt with, then that has to be dealt with at that later date, okay. I think. So basically, we are saying confined to the property, which is an acre to two right. acres. Right. Okay. I think that's that's probably the best way to go then. Okay. Uh, Brian, is there, before we move to a vote, is there anything else that you would think that we should put into the record as support? for such a decision. We have the testimony, we've got other written documentation, we've got testimony about how the dog is handled when, when out off the property. Do you think there's anything else that needs, that you would think needs to be um, included in the record? Uh, I, I don't believe it, it needs to be. Um, I think there was there was uh, testimony. If you want to be specific about certain testimony that 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 you that that you think is compelling, then I would you might want to call that out. Uh, okay, but mm -hmm. uh, really, yeah, I, 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 I think I think the compelling testimony is as much as I think the quantity of the testimony regarding this dog, and that is not a problem with. The dog being on any one property, but on many properties. And I, I would also say compelling, compelling testimony for me is testimony from the dog owner herself that she does not have control of the dog, as she has stated to several people who've testified tonight. I didn't say that, but no. I just think well, what yes, you did. No, but, but no. That was weird. Okay, so I think we have. The record established. I would like to move that Miles be confined to the property at 100 Haydenville Road, uh, having been deemed a dangerous dog to keep Miles Brownie. from from threatening or being perceived to threaten other people in the community. Do I have a second? Second, yes. We move to a vote unless there are any further comment. No further comment. In favor, Julie? Yes. yes. Chair, yes. The business of the board having been concluded, I move to adjourn. May I speak not about the dog? Second. Did anybody find what? a flat mountain bike? That's all I want to know. I lost my bike. It was stolen. Yeah, it's with the word. All oh, in favor, Julie. Thank you. We're adjourned. Yes. Me? Yes. We're adjourned.